welcome to episode two of ILTV. I'm your host, Lynn Ferrari. If you're a pet owner and you want to travel the world and bring your furry friends along, this video is for you. I'm very excited to introduce Warren and Julie Knox, who have been traveling the world with their dogs since 2020. Their journey started in Ecuador in 2020, just when lockdown hit, where they spent nine months in Ecuador before heading over to Eastern Europe. It's since then they've been traveling through Europe with their two dogs by car. In this video, they share lots of useful insights and tips on how they are traveling with their two dogs, what certifications they needed to get, what documents, what vaccinations, and um, how to get certified by a vet. Really useful tips if you are looking to do something similar. You can also follow along Warren and Julie's journey on their YouTube channel. I'll link them below. And this isn't the only time you'll hear from them on ILTV. They're going to be regular contributors. So um, they've also created a video. If you want to check out their journey so far, I'll link it down below too. So please hit the subscribe button and I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please let me know in the comments below if you have traveled with your pets or if you are planning to travel with your pets. We would love to hear from you. Hey everybody, so it's uh, Warren and Julie and hello to all the international living family out there. Yep. Um, if this is your first video with us, uh, Julie and I, we're slow traveling the world with our two dogs, Arya and Katie there. And we happen to be in Turkey today. I'm gonna put Arya down, she's a little bit heavy. <laughs> Not the Katie so she can relax. We've been traveling the world with our two dogs for approximately two and a half years. Well, actually a little bit longer than that, two and three quarters year. Yep. Um, we started our trip in uh, March of 2020. And initially we started with uh, different, one different dog. We did, and that was Gracie, our 15 year old Chihuahua. Yeah, so she was a great dog. We loved her to death and we wanted to bring her on this journey. And we didn't know if she was gonna live to be 18 or, or 15. So we didn't let that stop us from making the decision to move forward in our adventure. Um, but so far over two and a half years, we've had the girls on three continents and um, our Ecuador rescue Aria, which after Gracie passed away in Ecuador, we rescued Aria. Yes, we did. And uh, how many countries? Uh, Aria has now been to 17 and Katie's been to 18. And like he said, three continents. Yeah. Yes, and, and we're also gonna start uh, letting you guys know how we got to Ecuador, how we got from Ecuador to the United States, and then from United States to Europe with two dogs. It's possible, it's not impossible. Is it complicated? Absolutely it's, yeah, complicated, it's complicated, but it's worth it. Absolutely. I, I wouldn't have done it any other way. Um, we love our dogs. We love traveling with our two fur babies, but there are logistics involved that can be complicated, but not impossible. We do feel we are well informed on this topic, and we hope that this video is gonna give you the guidance you need to move forward with bringing your fur babies on your journey, whether you're slow traveling or making a permanent move. So our journey actually started in Ecuador, and Ecuador requires a great deal of timely preparedness and documentation. In order to bring your pet from the United States to Ecuador, you need a lengthy list of vaccines. I'll verbally list them as well as place them on the page. Distemper, K9 influenza, leptospirosis, parvovirus, and the one-year vaccine. Please make sure it's not the three-year. It has to be the one-year, and they must also have the internal as well as the external parasitic treatment. That treatment must be done within 21 days of your flight departure. In addition to all these requirements, you then have to also have the International Health Certificate done by a USDA certified veterinarian. It's extremely crucial the certificate is completed within 10 days of your departure or you may not be allowed on the plane with your pet. If possible, find a veterinarian that offers the digital version. Though Ecuador doesn't require the rabies titer nor the microchip, we recommend both. The rabies titer is actually a measurement of the antibody level from the rabies vaccine. If you have it perform, performed before leaving the United States, it is costly. It costs $350 in the States, but to be honest, it also costs us $350 to have ARIAs done in Ecuador. So in our opinions, it's a proactive move. 
Firstly, if you go to Ecuador, which is currently listed as a high rabies country, and then later you decide you want to go to Germany, Germany is not going to allow your pet into the country without this documentation. In the EU, once your pet has the rabies titer test performed and the levels come back properly, if the rabies vaccine does not lapse, the titer is good for the life of the pet. The rabies titer is best done 120 days before leaving the United States. That gives plenty of time for the mandatory 90-day waiting period after the test is performed to enter the countries that do require it. Additionally, as of this video, the CDC is still banning animals from re-entering the United States from a high rabies country if they don't meet certain requirements. We honestly feel this step minimizes the risk of not being able to return to the United States with your pet, and who knows what can happen. Something extremely important to note is the microchip must be done before the rabies vaccine in that order. Our journey from the United States to Ecuador was honestly, in our opinion, far more complicated than our journey from the United States into Europe. Yes. Now, we flew from Fort Lauderdale to Guayaquil, Ecuador with our two dogs just as they were shutting down the border on March 15, 2020 due to the pandemic. We and our dogs were the last Americans to enter the country as far as we are aware because of the lockdowns there. The flight that we took was direct and it only took four and a half hours and Cuenca, Ecuador was our destination city. So we paid a driver to take us as well as our two dogs from Guayaquil airport and drive us to our new home in Cuenca. That journey was about four and a half hours, but it was exciting as it was our first day in South America and we ended up staying in Ecuador unexpectedly, however, for nine months as we had nowhere else that we were allowed to go. So during that pandemic time, we were able to explore the Andes, go to the Mendo Cloud Forest, go through the Amazon and go down to the Pacific coast. And we brought our dogs along for the adventure. We found several great vets located in Cuenca and the cost of services were very reasonable. We also saw a really great vet in Vilcabamba, Ecuador. Unfortunately, our oldest Chihuahua passed away after almost six months in Ecuador. My heart broke. She was my sidekick for many years. We had videoed dog rescues while we were in Ecuador and learned about many dogs that lived their entire existence in the shelters there. There are a lot of strays, but not enough people. So since we lost Gracie, I decided we would rescue an unadoptable mutt. We found Arya. She was dirty, she was not affectionate, and she was picked on by the bigger dogs. She could care less that I picked her up, but I knew that if I put her down, she'd die there. Her life was literally hanging in my hands, so I adopted her. She turned out to be a great travel dog, and she is well behaved in our Airbnbs, as well as the many restaurants that she's been to so far on three continents. Well, once our journey in South America was over, we actually had to schedule appointments with our veterinarian and once again have international health certificates issued for both dogs to be allowed back into the United States with us. Once again, these certificates had to be issued in a timely manner and we had to present them well ahead of our flight to the agricultural office. Once the agricultural office cleared the paperwork, we then boarded our flight and flew from Guayaquil back to Fort Lauderdale. It was again a direct flight, and at the time, both of our dogs were small enough to be transported with us in the cabin, which was such a joy. Okay, so we're at the Guayaquil airport. What time is it? Uh, it looks like 10.16. Okay, our flight is in about, what, two hours? Yeah. We a long wait here in the airport. And we'll be heading to oh, what she says, Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Fort Lauderdale, and we'll be in the states for a couple weeks. And so we're almost back to the states for a little bit. We're gonna miss Ecuador. Fortunately, Julie and I did our homework. We brought the girls back into the United States without a hiccup, and the paperwork was thoroughly checked. Aria here, out here in the morning for sunrise here at a dog beach in the uh, Indian Harbor Beach area. So this is her first uh, day here in Florida, getting to go out, see the sand and see the sun, see the ocean. We're not gonna go in the water though, it's too cold, but uh, she's enjoying her time out here on the sand. 
We left Florida after about a week and we drove all the way up to New York with a one-way car rental so that we could do the direct flight out of the United States. Well, we're at the gate in New York City, about to get on our Air Serbia flight. So far, so good. We've got the dogs, uh, I think, ready to go. And uh, if all goes well, we'll be in Serbia in about uh, 11 hours. Okay, so we are in, where are we, honey? <laughs> Belgrade. We made it, so. We did. Now we're just waiting on our rental car. Yep, start of the next chapter of the travel experience. <laughs> yes, yes, we're tired right now, but we'll be much more enthusiastic after some sleep. Hi. 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 What's your Andre. name? An Andre. Andre? Lana. Lana. Martina. Martina. And these are their mothers? Eva and Eva. And, and they're having a good time with Katie. Katie's not sure what's going on, but she's, she's okay being patient. We are often asked how we got our tube pups into, uh, into Europe. And after a lot of extensive research, we found that the country of Serbia would allow our dogs in, but coming from the United States, they required a few things first. They wanted the microchip, which is mandatory throughout Europe, an up-to-date rabies vaccine, and an international health certificate. These requirements are the least extensive of any of the other countries that we researched for Europe. We were lucky. We found a veterinarian whom we felt was reasonable financially and logistically, and she was located in Knoxville, Tennessee. And thankfully, that was on our travel path from Florida to New York, so we set up appointments for both of the dogs. They'd already been microchipped a long time prior to this appointment, so that wasn't necessary, and they'd been vaccinated for rabies recently. All she had to do was a checkup on each of them and issue the international health certificate, but it did still have to get digitally signed by the USDA. Thankfully, all of it was done very quickly. Serbia allowed a digital certificate so the veterinarian's office was able to send the documents to us a few days after our visit via email. It's mandatory to show these certificates prior to boarding your plane and they have to be timely. Serbia required the certificate to be issued no more than 10 days before flying. We found Air Serbia would allow both of our dogs to fly with us in the cabin, so we booked a direct flight from JFK, New York to Belgrade, Serbia. The flight, thankfully, was uneventful and took only eight and a half hours. As of the time of the flight, Aria was thankfully still small enough to fly inside the cabin. Unfortunately now, she's grown to a whopping 13.8 kilograms and no longer meets these requirements. So, due to her size, we've chosen to move around Europe by Car? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're doing this by car, not by rental car, everybody. So we are Americans. We did not have residency anywhere in the continent. So you're probably curious as how we are able to purchase a car in Europe and register it without having residency in Europe or illegally utilizing someone else's address in the European territory. So this took hours of extensive research and because it's a pretty long process and there's a lot of details we want to share, we're going to cover this in another video. But we bought a Citroen Berlingo and we feel pretty confident in our ability to take our dogs in having that freedom to travel and not having to jump in planes constantly. By traveling through car, it just alleviates a lot of our headaches. So we affectionately call our car Abby, short for the abyss. And we call her that because of the storage capacity that she has. And by the way, she is diesel and gets 45 miles per gallon, which is great when paying for fuel in Europe. In a future video, again, we're gonna talk more in depth about the process. Okay, how are you liking the trip so far, are you? That's what I'm thinking. Back's hurting a little bit, but uh, we're making it. She's a good girl. Yes, she is. So we initially arrived in Serbia and we were required to get new international pet certificates at a vet's office prior to entering the next country. However, this was only requested once. 
When Bulgaria opened their borders, we went there as quickly as possible to obtain EU pet passports. You should be able to get one made in any EU country if you have your paperwork up to date. That's seriously important. Our continued travels have been made so much easier thanks to this EU pet passport. It is truly the golden ticket if you want to travel with your pet throughout Europe as well as the country of Turkey. This passport style document totally simplifies our travel. We found a Bulgarian veterinarian that would issue the EU pet passport for both of our fur babies, but we did call him ahead of time and made sure he had the document available and would issue it. The cost for both of these documents was approximately $40. We show it along with our US passports at the border and freely enter each country, which is such a dream. Once you've entered the Schengen territory, however, you shouldn't need to present the EU pet passport until you're leaving the Schengen zone and crossing into a non-Schengen country. If you aren't familiar with the term Schengen, we will cover this topic in a future video, and let me tell you, it's quite an important topic. There are a few Scandinavian countries that require a veterinary certificate be issued in addition to this pet passport, but they are very select. Norway requires the certificate but it, because it is mandatory to have the fox dwarf tapeworm treatment before entering their country. We've now traveled through 15 European countries throughout Europe, as well as Turkey, across many hard borders multiple times. Well now, when we're traveling through Europe and actually anywhere in the world, we are typically staying in pet-friendly Airbnbs for almost all of our accommodations. Now, a warning. If you have pets, you're going to lose about 60% of the listings when you enter pets as a criteria. But once you build your reputation score and have reviews, reach out to ask for an exception. Due to our glowing dog reviews from our hosts that we've stayed at, we often get accepted as an exception. So when we are traveling from one country to the next and it requires a stopover for a night, we often rely on pet friendly hotels. We have been amazed how much easier this process has been than we originally thought. Our dogs are well behaved and are used to living in new places. You'll want to practice adapting your dogs to living life on the road if you're planning to slow travel like Julie and I. By staying in new places if you can prior to starting your journey, you'll be able to adapt your dog to being away from you and being in new places and to be respectful. We never use a crate when traveling as we have 100% trust in our girl's behavior. You may, may need to bring one with you or purchase one wherever you're going if you're not confident. Our dogs are used to sitting peacefully at restaurants and they explore many sites with us. We do feel comfortable leaving them alone however for 6-8 to eight hours when it's necessary. We honestly feel if there's a will there's a way. We did not let fear keep us from moving forward with our dream to see Europe, and we refuse to leave our fur babies behind. If you truly want to see the world with your pet, it is possible. It might cost you a bit more to bring them along, but their unconditional love will be worth every penny and every ounce of time involved. We hope you have enjoyed our video and feel better informed and ready to move forward with moving your pet abroad with you. So we hope that this video has given you a little bit of information and enlightened you a little bit to know that it is possible to start your adventure with your pet, regardless of the age. Don't let that slow you down. It's great to travel with your pets. There is a little bit more responsibility in there, but we wouldn't change that. Now, we also wanna make sure that you're going to check out International Living content going forward, that you're gonna follow ILTV and that you're gonna make Julie and I part of your routine and that you know, you'll follow us as you prepare for your adventure or even if you're already on your adventure. And so until next time from Turkey, have, have a, a great, great day, day everybody. Bye-bye. And there you have it, another episode of ILTV. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below, turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos and join me for next week's episode. Bye.